Hey guys, welcome back to the Capital Mindset Show. Uh, this is going to be the portfolio reveal. I want to first lay down the ground rules. One, uh, this, this is going to be a Google Sheet. You will have access to view it. You won't be able to actually edit anything. And this is for the perspective of everyone else looking at it because you know this is the internet and people sometimes like to do things for the laughs. So the information there is done by me, no one else, and it should be accurate, right? It will update in real time. I don't really make any trades. It's free. You don't have to pay for this. It's just for the transparency of the channel and uh, going forward. Now you can take it from here on into the future and think about it and see like kind of how I'm performing over time. Uh, on that note, I'm not including my wife's portfolio my, and also my private holdings. My private holdings are my holdings. These are only simply just the, uh, uh, pro, not the public, private, the public invested uh, uh, stocks, okay? So publicly invested securities, that's what's going to be included in this portfolio. It will both be my core holdings or not my non-speculative assets and my speculative assets as well, okay? And I'll go over a little bit about each company, why I bought in the first place, just very brief. It won't be a video because it would be too long of a video and I don't want to take up too much of your time, okay? So uh, do not copy this at all. This is, again, simply for the point of transparency. I'm not profiting at all from you guys you know, downloading the sheet. Or, or looking at this sheep, this is just free, completely free. Go ahead, have at it, but please do not copy. Again, simply for transparency purposes only. Uh, so on that note, let's actually go ahead and go here. And this is actually uh, updated as of today, but technically yesterday, uh, I just put today's date. And uh, the uh, I'll go over again, there's 22 holdings in this side of the portfolio, but they're not all core holdings. I actually have that here. It automatically calculates it based on the designation. Designation is over here. Dividends reinvested. This is a different part of the strategy. And then this is the actual strategy, which is am I holding, accumulating, selling, thinking about selling, or have I sold it completely? And then long-term capital gains. So th the way this works, it's not including dividends reinvested. It is simply saying out of my raw capital, are all the purchases I've made considered now all long-term capital gains? Will some of them be long-term capital gains and some not? I will designate it as a no, okay? But just because it's a no doesn't mean that some of them aren't, okay? But I just went safe and said none of it's uh, long-term capital gains if there are some of the purchases that I made that are not considered that, okay? That's the rule there. Uh, company name, ticker, very straightforward. Average cost, that's you know calculated across all accounts, all of this updates in real time. If I add new shares, I add it and, and adjust the average cost. Um, and uh, the price updates in real time, the allocation percentage updates in real time as the price updates, because that, you know, price affects the uh, allocation. Some will go up, some will go down. Um, so for the most part, I'll go over again, one by one by one. Uh, some of these have had videos. So some of these, you know, uh, publicly when I bought because uh, I've made videos on them and I said I bought them at this price or I'm buying here. And so some of these have videos. Other ones do not have videos. Uh, the ones that don't have videos, I didn't make videos because there's no point in addressing or making videos on stuff that, you know, the opportunity is just not there because I'm always thinking about videos that provide value. Making a, a, a stock or stock video on a company that I'm buying, you know, two years ago provides no value to you guys. So, you know, you won't see a value video on that. Uh, the only ones when I do do videos on past investments is if there is a case study, a specific lesson that I think can provide value to other people, then I'll make a video on that. Uh, so again, let's go it uh, one by one by one. Okay, so LYB Rio Tinto, uh, videos on both of those and talked about why I like those companies. Um, and again, the allocation strategy is right there. I'm accumulating. And the reasons for that is their core businesses in terms of what they do for other businesses, B2B, uh, their, their products are very vital, very necessary, and also kind of like inflationary hedge and also their international stocks. Okay, good. Boom, done. Cardinal Health, Cardinal Health, I also liked it. Also, I uh, don't know if there's a video on that one. There might not be a video on that one. That one deserves a little bit of a video. Um, but Cardinal Health, I might be actually switching it to, over to accumulating. Uh, long-term capital gains is no, cause it's a more recent purchase, but yeah, this one probably deserves video. AGRD, there is a video on this one. There's a video explaining what, when it's moving from, uh, speculative to core. And you can see it here. I did buy more. I am accumulating more of this one. Uh, maybe at these prices, I'm going to slow it down a lot. The accumulation, especially since it's already kind of at 5%, uh, Abby, this is a company I bought in like one massive lump sum. And then I reinvested the dividends. And this was because this was in the uncertainty of the Allergan acquisition. Uh, if you ran a DCF, very simple DCF, it was a, you know, fairly good price at that point. And you didn't really have to model out much growth. And it turns out it was correct. Uh, so that one was, a, that one is a core holding. 
Uh, I'm not buying any more, no more new capital, uh, but I was reinvesting dividends, not anymore. Okay, I'm taking those dividends and just storing them. Uh, Citigroup, this is the bank of the portfolio. This one was actually accumulated during a time of the quote unquote crisis, not the financial crisis, the crisis that just recently happened in 2020. Uh, didn't buy it at the ultimate low, but I bought it at a very good price in my opinion. And uh, I am accumulating, I am reinvesting the dividends, but I'm accumulating very little bits, okay? Uh, BHP, similar reason to Rio and LYB. There's a video on that one because this one is a recent purchase. Conoco Phillips, this was a purchase back in 2020 of November. I did a video on that as a case study to explain why or what I saw at the time, uh, what the thesis was, et cetera. But I am actually in the process of selling this. I've actually made a video on that. So that information is already out there. This is not the first time you should be seeing that. It is in the selling process. And and there is a strategy that I'm implementing to kind of over time uh, bring that down and taking my profits out. And this one is pure long-term capital gains, okay? Um, the Molson Coors Brewery, this is a beer company. I'm holding it. It's ancillary position. It's a supporting role. Um, and by the way, if I didn't mention this, partial core right up here, there's two of them. This is because there's uh, at least two in that industry that I really liked. And they're, they're so similar that I just bought both of them and I consider them one core. So partial cores, every two or three. Uh, equal the one core. So for example, there's actually 11 core holdings in the portfolio if you include uh, Rio Tinto and BHP. Okay, so there's not 10, there's 11. And the ancillary positions are supporting positions, right? They're not the main characters of the story. All right, so going to Unum, this is my insurance play. I was buying them at below 50% book value. I thought it was a really good value at the time. There was a lot of uncertainty whether or not COVID was going to kill everyone. And uh, I didn't think so based on the data and that their, their numbers weren't going to be that much affected as much as the market was, was actually implying. And uh, they basically were priced for decay, like crazy decay. And I could still come out on top. It was a really good buy, in my opinion. And they were always buying back shares at below book value. Awesome. That's a quick summary, by the way. I could go into more detail, but it'd be too long of a video. Um, so, you know, I'm just holding on that one and I am reinvesting the dividend. And that's basically it. None of my new capital is going in. Markel Group, video on this one as well. I love this company. Uh, this one is a long term holding at this point. It is all long term capital gains. There's no dividends, so there's no reinvesting. <laughs> And um, uh, also Brookfield Asset Management, by the way, they're basically kind of the same thing. I think the video covered both of them. So Brookfield Asset Management, I am actually in the process of selling. I am not accumulating more. I'm selling it, taking my profits and thinking about what to do with it. Probably just accumulating cash. Um, you know, there's no, no time in the market here. Do not time the market. Simply just look for assets that you want to accumulate over time and just accumulate them. That's that's kind of my thoughts on that. I, there, that deserves its own video, but that's kind of my quick thoughts. Uh, Discovery Communications, there's a video on that one as well on this channel. And we talked about this one when I was buying, when I was accumulating, uh, et cetera. So that that's that one needs no introduction go watch those videos uh activision blizzard uh did a video on when i was buying what why i was buying it and i didn't actually get to uh build it out as much as i wanted to and then i sold it on the day that the the um uh the the sale was going through and i made a video and released it on that day um i believe it was on that day but yeah that one's no longer in the in the portfolio it's gone it was a really good performer for the short amount of time all that was short-term capital gains i know sucks i have to pay tax on that um, at my income level, which really sucks. And then so Dropbox, Dropbox was really good uh, investment back in the day. And uh, the, now this is pure long-term capital gains. I'm just holding no positions, uh, not accumulating anymore, just keeping it. Meta, this one is one that I just recently did a video on that one. Uh, I am adding to my position in Meta. Meta was never one, it, it was one that kind of escaped me. And then it went into like escape velocity. <laughs> And then now it's coming back down. So now I'm actually accumulating and it is a core designation. It's only at 2% right now as of the making of this video. And I really actually want to bring that up. And as I, again, liquidate more positions, I might actually add to this. And by the way, this also, also doesn't go into my cash and cash equivalents uh, because this is actually only showing, uh, this is 90.38% of the public uh, stocks. Okay, public stocks, this area of the portfolio makes up 90.38% of that. Okay. So just so everyone understands, because remember, I'm not including my, my real estate holdings, uh, any private investments I have, just, just the public, uh, publicly traded stocks. Okay. Uh, going over to Alphabet, this is again, as I stated in the video, uh, this one is my largest holding is of public stocks by far. It's at 25.3%. I've done very, fairly well on it. Uh, no, no plans on, on selling it as of now, just holding 
Uh, could I have sold at above 3000? Sure. But you know, I don't really do that kind of stuff. You, it's very boring. I'm not going to be making a lot of moves, guys. Um, I only make moves occasionally, right? Um, okay, then Amazon. Amazon's been a small position in the portfolio. Now, uh, I used to own more Amazon, and then I actually was selling Amazon. So now it's, it's, you know, it's only making up about 2% uh, of the portfolio. Uh, whether or not it comes back down to an attractive price, then you know, that uh, strategy would change, but you know, I'm just holding that 2%. I'm not really doing anything with it. Uh, Cirrus Logic. This one was an interesting buy. Not many people know about this company. This one I've, I've actually been accumulating uh, recently, small position within the portfolio. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's basically that one. Uh, Bauman video on that one. Uh, there is a video already existing on Boston Omaha. Oh, by the way, Cirrus Logic probably deserves a video. I'll do a video on Cirrus Logic because I am accumulating now. Um, so Boston Omaha, there's a video on that one. I like this business too. Uh, it's an ancillary position. It's not going to be a core holding. It's basically like a mini, mini, mini Berkshire Hathaway. I'm hesitant always to talk about that one because it is technically micro cap, but no one cares about that one because it's a boring company. So I can talk about it. Uh, it's not going to make you quick, rich, rich, quick. Definitely not. It actually could completely fail. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but if it turns out to be well, you know, great. And then there's Gazprom. Gazprom is the Russian gas company. Uh, this actually, if I'm being honest, should be a partial core included with ConocoPhillips, but ConocoPhillips definitely is a core. Gazprom is like the ancillary to that core position. I did not equal weight them or anything like that. If anything, if Gazprom, you know, comes out to an attractive price, you know, Maybe I switch over, but I don't really like to do that. But I'm in the process of actually selling Conical Phillips and not Gazprom. I'm not selling Gazprom yet. Uh, Gazprom is high, much higher risk, though. I'll say that. Uh, but you know, I think it's priced for it. Uh, not saying it's a buy now, by the way. Do not, I'm not saying that. And anyway, you shouldn't like buy a stock just because you see it on here. Um, so okay, so this is the dangerous side of the portfolio. Uh, this one I have set up some rules, and these are my rules, and it kind of just explains my thought process. Don't actually. Uh, copy my rules, uh, make up your own rules, right? Think about yourself, what, what benefits you personally as a person, what keeps you in check, what keeps you from, you know, acting on emotions. Cause the reason why I have rules for, um, these kinds of positions is because they have, they tend to have really interesting stories. And as humans, we love stories. So when, uh, when you look at a story and you fall in love with a story, you're actually more likely to make a, a bad decision. So I've set up some uh, rules actually, this is not even a complete list of rules. You guys have watched my videos on uh, some speculative assets. You know, uh, some of the rules I apply that are actually missing from here, but I'll actually go over them ver verbatim here and I'll probably add them somewhere here. Uh, but basically, uh, rule number one, the risk, right? The risk reward needs to be favorable. If I don't even think the risk reward is favorable, it shouldn't even be in here. Okay. Uh, so there's some, <laughs> there's some stocks in here that break that rule, but, <laughs> but that's not the most important rule. Okay. But that's a rule that I, I really want to adhere to most of the time. Um, and then position, uh, sorry, rule number two, position should not be too small that if the thesis plays out, you know, you won't even feel it. So if you're going to make an investment and it's so small that, you know, if it goes, if a 10 X is, for example, you're not going to feel it, you shouldn't even have it. Like it's making no difference in your portfolio. Why are you adding on risk? That's not necessary. Uh, so you got to have, it kind of goes with rule number one. So if you don't think that there is a potential, right then why, why would you, why would you even uh, invest in something? If like, for example, oh, I don't think there's any potential. It's like a gamble. Why? That's not an investment. It's a gamble. Okay. Again, there's one or two in there that break that rule, but I'll, I'll go over those. <laughs> there's a reason why. Uh, and then a total maximum allocation in total of 10% of the uh, publicly traded stocks. So 10% of all publicly traded stocks in my accounts can be um, uh, speculative assets. And I think currently they are sitting at, yeah, 9.62. So this actually excludes um, if they were to grow. So I don't actually punish uh, winners. So if, for example, if I'm right on, on Zillow or Overstock or any of these, blah, 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 blah. If they grow past a certain amount, that's, that's pretty crazy. I won't just sell them just because of that. I'll actually just revisit the thesis and kind of see, okay, is the risk reward favorable? Uh, stuff like that. And then I'll actually go over these other rules that actually aren't listed here and they're very important. If a stock's destiny is out of its hands, immediately uh, speculative asset. So for example, this one over here, even though I've done very well on it, it I would never allocate um, a, as a core holding, even though right now it's almost at the size that you could consider it, it competes. It's bigger than uh, Facebook, for example, at, at this present moment. It's done very well, but it would never, ever, ever make it to a core position simply because its destiny was out of its hands. The government actually didn't allow them to do their main core business for a while. 
And so they were very distressed because of that. But looking at looking uh, back, I, it was a good risk adjusted play uh, because if, if, if things went well, I would have done well and I still might do very well. But if things don't do well, it's not in their control. OK, so then I won't I don't want a lot of exposure. And in fact, I did end up trimming, by the way, it was actually larger. Uh, this ended up getting close to 5% of the portfolio when it hit 14 bucks. And then I trimmed and the, I mentioned that in the video a while back. And um, um, again, that I don't really like to talk about these kinds of companies because they're micro caps. And I have to make that as a uh, staple rule in this channel not to talk about them. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Also, if any of them pay dividends, the rule of all speculative assets is that they are no, no dividend reinvestment. Just give me that cash, take money out of the table. Um, so there's two on here that really break that rule, by the way, and that is Corsair Gaming and BurgerFi International. And I actually say that right here. Uh, so YouTube accountability, I did say on the channel that I would buy if it reached a certain price because I was quite bearish on it or negative, a little bit negative towards it when it was a much higher price. And that was actually towards the beginning of the channel. And then I just kind of stated a price. I'd be like, oh, I'd be interested if it hit this price. And then the thing is, as the fundamentals started to change, my price kept getting lower and lower. So I would, <laughs> but then I, I stay, stayed true to my word and I added it. Uh, and my average cost is actually close to where we are now. And I, I was kind of forced to buy it at that, at that price. And I, I bought a little bit, you know, there and here and there. Uh, but it's basically nothing in my portfolio. Um, so I have it as YouTube accountability and same with Baba and Tencent. Those two are also bought as YouTube accountability. Those have videos and expressing about when it is I bought. Uh, so uh, they were bought around uh, the early times of December. And uh, I only bought, I, I bought them in a couple big chunks uh, around that time. And then those are the average cost uh, uh, for them. And, uh, you know, I didn't get them at the very bottom because intraday, they got really low. I think they got like 104, 105 intraday for Baba and then some 50, some 56, something 55, something. Um, then they went up and then they went back down and there was actually another opportunity to add at the similar prices. So uh, we'll see if that one happens again, but uh, you guys know my opinions on those. That's, and that's why they're here in the speculative side of the portfolio. Uh, so I won't really rant on that too much. Uh, Green Witch Life Sciences, uh, very extraordinarily risky. Uh, and that is exactly why it's an allocation of 0.11%. But cancer research, why not? Uh, it literally, if, if you ask me, that's literally it. It's, this is either go bust or go big. Um, quite, quite literally gambling, but gambling for a good cause, gambling for cancer. Okay. So um, it's not like I gave them money, guys, by the way. I don't want to make it sound like I gave them money and they're using my No, no, I just bought the shares. Whether or not those shares were issued and they raised capital from me buying those shares, good on that. Then I guess in that instance, I am funding their research. But um, I'm, I'm investing in it for that reason. Not There's no DCF. There's no analysis I can give you to kind of justify it. But it's in here. It's a speculative asset. Okay, I think I'm being responsible with that. BurgerFi International, that is simply a fun play. Okay. Literally just breaks, just breaks the rules. I, I eat there. Uh, I like the, the milkshakes. It's a fun play. I think I deserve, I can put 2.26% of my portfolio in something fun. Okay. I think I deserve that. Okay. It's my money. <laughs> um, and by the way, again, this is like the, the very speculative side uh, of the portfolio. And then there's one that's again, Egan, you know, you, you'll see actually quite, quite a bit of micro caps in here, but Egan corporation, um, you know, small position in my portfolio. It's it's grown recently. I was doing nothing. It was like basically flat forever. And who knows? It's probably going to come back down to the price and then just stay there. Uh, this one actually had in interesting fundamentals. Uh, I won't really do a video on that one simply because it it is a, a, a micro cap. And as the the channel grows, I have to be responsible, and I should not do uh, videos on micro caps unless. There is a specific lesson to be had, but even then, if I'm have any way invested in it, I'm not going to want to do it. Okay. I'm not going to want to do it because if I want to make money, I want to make money because I was right on investment, not because I talk about it and through people watching, they go put their money in it and then I sell. No, 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 just not going to happen. All right. So, um, when you see us, when you see a stock in here, just know, and if it's a micro cap, I'm probably not going to talk about it. If it's in the speculative side, I'm not going to talk about it. OK, uh, I talked about again, I talked about this one because I got to say when I was a much smaller channel and I mentioned that in that video, in those videos, I am speaking about this stock because I'm a small channel. No one's really going to see this, so <laughs> I'm not going to have any influence. But yeah, as, a, as a rule, as I get bigger, I'm kind of planning on long term rules. 
micro caps, if I'm invested, I will not do a video on them. And by the way, actually, I, I, I'll mention this here. This deserves its own video. Um, I, my new prospective employer, it will come with quite a bit of restrictions. There will be actually some publicly traded companies I will not be able to talk about. And I won't even be able to say that I'm not allowed to talk about them. So I'll mention this in the future that, you know, to remind everyone, if there's a stock that I simply cannot talk about, um, and I can't even say that I can't talk about it because then it tells you that they're, you know, a quote unquote client, um, then, um, yeah, you can just assume what you want, but I will not be able to confirm nor deny. And then uh, there will be some companies I just blacklisted. Like I, you request it, and I, I just can't. I can't do it. Um, I won't be able. I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, honest person. I will not talk about them. Okay, to anyone. Um, all right, guys. On that note, if you guys have any questions about this uh, video, about this uh, portfolio, uh, go ahead and feel free to leave the comments down below. Oh, there's also this section. So this is a watch list. Um, I'm going to be updating this because this is not even a complete watch list. I was just adding them in, and uh, I'm not ex I'm not exposed to these companies. Well, actually, no, no. Some some of them I am exposed to through my wife. I will not mention which ones because for her privacy. But through my wife, I'm exposed to some of these. Um, and uh, yeah, each of these probably deserves their own video. Again, uh, they're just companies I'm watching. They're not. There's not like a, a you know. Like, for example, I'll, I'll say it, Coca-Cola is expensive, but I'm watching it. If it ever got cheap, you know, I'm watching it, right? Uh, that's just an example of what's on here. AMD, same thing. Love the company. Waiting for that price, okay? NVIDIA, same thing. ASML, same thing. All of these. Basically, the reason why they're on the watch list is I'm just keeping an eye on them, okay? On that note, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like content like this, go ahead and feel free to leave a like. If you guys have any questions, leave comments down below. Uh, again, no, no paywall. There's no links aside from the link to look at this, uh, uh, portfolio have at it. Do not copy it. Please do not copy it. Uh, it is simply just for the transparency. So you guys just know, you know, what I'm exposed to. Uh, and then as I add things, I'll, I'll be, I'm debating on when I'm going to, or how often I'll do updates on this. I'm thinking right now because of my time frame and work once a quarter, maybe once a month, you know, I'm kind of in between uh, comment down below how often you'd, you'd like to, but just so you guys know, I do not do that many moves. I just, I just don't. Okay. So like, there's no point, you know, I'm never, ever, ever going to charge anyone to see my moves. Plus I, I don't think that's healthy. I want my, my own like privacy in that regard. Um, so uh, on that note, guys, I hope you guys have a great one. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.